Hello YouTube, it's Jake Weezy Got Jelly here once again with my final book, book, whatever review slash album review for quite a while. Yes, this is the last album I will be reviewing for at least a couple months. But I kind of move on to bigger and better things after this. So for my final review, it's gonna be my album review at least. I'm gonna be doing. A big one. The biggest one yet, actually. There's also going to be a book thrown in. Yes. It is the Pinkerton Diaries slash Alone 3 The Pinkerton Years. Alright. So, let's get started. I'll start with the book first. Here it is. Good book. One of the best I've... Actually, the best I've ever written, by the way. Um, If you're lucky enough to get one of these, you'll see that Rivers Cuomo actually writes inside your book the copy just a number but it doesn't really matter and it starts off with him having pictures of himself in Van Nuys California which is where Pinkerton was recorded kinda cool I think and he starts out writing about the blue album mainly the sweater song and a really bad dream he had but yeah it's cool Let's see, then it's still there, and then finally he writes his first song for his second album, No Other One, that's what it's called, as you can see right here, yeah, I know, pretty cool, huh, has a picture of him and his brother right there, on page number eight, him and leaves, he's showing all the letters he writes to him, and stuff like that. Then he gets on to his song called Let Me Wash It Your Sink. Good one, but I'll get to that when we get to the album. Devotion. We all know Devotion. I've explained that before. Sadly, not on the album, though. Oh, well. Uh, he's on a billboard. That's pretty good. Or, in his words, that's pretty freaking rad. That's a good thing. That's what we want. But this is still in 1994. And he's talking about all the rock star stuff he's got to do. All that. That's pretty cool. I like it. He says, Cocaine, chicks, limousines for the four of us who make up Weezer. Pat, Matt, Brian, and I. These adolescent dreams are finally coming true. Sort of. Actually, there hasn't been much cocaine at all yet. <laughs> I think that's pretty funny. Let's see, let's see, that my biggest influence is Mike Mars of Motley Crue. I still don't believe that. But whatever he says. Still think it's a code code. If you're not familiar with River's long hair, he had it during the time you were at the Blue Album. And he got it after the Buddy Holly video. Yes, he did have long hair in the Buddy Holly video, but you couldn't really tell. It says, I cut my hair after the Buddy Holly video yesterday. Thank God. See, all these cool pictures here. The band, their instruments. It shows a picture of them performing, and it shows, you know, I'll just let you see. I don't know what that is. And then to Gavin Edwards, the stuff you requested. Uh, him and his brother. His brother looks exactly like him. He's talking about pop versus art music, all that. And finally, here's where we get to the good part. His next album is starting to be made up. He's come up with the name Songs from the Black Hole. It says Songs from the Black Hole, script draft one. And his characters so far are Orlando, Chewbacca, Buck, Han Solo, Starbuck, Apollo, Jonas, Luke Skywalker, Dundo, Juan, Leia, Maria, Laurel. That's Star Warsy for me, but... Yep. Here's the original story. Or setting. Whatever. It is the year 2125. Once 
Los Angeles has a thriving underground music scene. The Space Dogs are finishing up their set at the Black Hole. That's a place they played at. And that's why it was called Songs from the Black Hole. And anyways, outside, the patrons' travel pods can be seen parked. Patrons' travel pods. I don't know. I never really got the... Besides, I know it's something they drive, but whatever. Here's what Blast Off was originally supposed to be. I'm so sorry, one and I'm done. I'm off to the corner of the room and I don't want to face another living soul. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do it this way. I'm so sorry, one and I'm done. I'm off to the corner of the room and I don't want to face another living soul. Tell me when you wanna go, one and I'm done. No way, that was a good one, man. Yeah, we really rocked them hard tonight. For that, I deserve another shot at the stuff I was doing before I went on stage. Or at least a pretty girl. So what do you say, Jonas? There's Maria and her little sister. Bet you won't have to work too hard to get her home. I don't know if I want to lead on a woman, you know I've done that before. She's actually a good girl, underneath it all. So, yeah, there's I Call For You, Blast Off, the original. So, they, they get into all of these songs and there is a storyline, and if you've ever heard of Operation Space Opera song from the Black Hole. This is where they get all their ideas from. Almost none of it's original. Just no thanks. Tells him how he falls in love with Laurel. It tells him how they. I don't know. How they get in the fight. It's an interesting story. You have to see it but yes it has a lot of pictures in here and I'm not gonna read apart from every page that's why I'm skipping so many pages right now um but it does show the early sketches for now I finally see good news my dream love also known as I just saw the love of my dreams and yes now Act 1, May 10th, 1994, the date the was released. And yes, now, they finally get it. Here's a new setting. Scene 1, the main deck. Betsy 2 blasts off with a five-person, one mechanoid crew aboard bound for... It says four. Okay. Yeah, there's a new setting. There's also a song in here called Tragic Girl, but it's not the one we know off of Pinkerton Deluxe. It was one that has never seen the light of day. Never, nobody's ever covered it, nobody's ever done anything. So I'll get to it here in a second. Oh, here's a picture. Oh, well, this thing, I want to see that. Santa Monica College. Good for rivers. Now. Here we go. Here's the near finished version. Actually, it is finished. Not really. But it says Act 1, May 10th, 2126. Yeah, it does have all the songs, such as The Finished Blast Off. You know, all that. Tired of Sex. Super Friend. get you no other one in touchdown you know from operation space opera there we go and then devotion what is this I think?
Maria tells him he's, she's pregnant and all that. And then the last song on here is I Just Ruffle of My Dreams. Then at the end it says, Black Hole, help. You're our only hope. Last survivor. And now, that's off in Rivers. He's at Children's Hospital after he's had surgery. God. It's pretty intense there. In 1995, at least. Jonas, Wanda, Ndo, Jojo, Laurel, M1. Some from the black holes finally getting up there. Oh, no, you're screwed. Let's see. Let's see. Spirit is giving out. My leg has hurt unbelievable the past four days. The misery. Tonight was our first show. Puke pain. I try and think of my family. The mantra that loves me, Am um, Shantai, Am um, Shantai, swirling Kodian. Whatever. Pattern hallucinations of petty wards in my mind. Wow. God. That's intense. No one. Where's his house? <laughs> I'm doing it somewhere. Cry and cry. See that? It says, when you kiss me and say you love me. There we go, that's the real tragic girl. Songs in the black hole got screwed up. Starts riding across the sea. There's him when he was riding Pinkerton, by the way. Pretty screwed up, dude. Sunshine for sunshine. There he is. So, basically, in 1997, there, he finally just loses it. I'll read you the final line of the book, just so you know what's going on. I won't ruin anything, because it doesn't ruin anything. Pinkerton is over every flower will fade away every hour of every day turn to dust and sweet decay every dream that comes at night loses life in the morning's light the sun is shining over my head the bird is singing good morning friend the rose is blooming without a sign of what tomorrow brings of winter time oh god the insecurities are mounting negative thoughts of the highest order this has been a tough year i mean apart from the fact this was the greatest summer of my life. It's not just that the world has said Pinkerton isn't worth a shit. Crap. The blue album wasn't either. It was a fluke. It was the video. Uh, okay. So, there really is no. Just that. Okay. And I guess this is the part you all came for. Is that it? Okay. So Let's start this then. I'm so lonely. Shortest song I've ever heard in my life. Besides You Suffer, which is the shortest song I've ever written. I'm so lonely is only 19 seconds and it's about five Rivers Cuomo's saying I'm so lonely. 
Next, get you. The demo for get you. Good demo. You should really listen to it. It's very different from what we were going to hear in Pinkerton, and I think it was based more on songs from the Black Hole, what we were going to hear on there. But, oh well, we never heard that, did we? Lisa. Good song. Good original River Cuomo song. Don't know why it never made it on any any albums. But, yeah. It's good. Negative Land. This song sounds very familiar. I'm so sorry, Negative Land. Yes, it was the original Blast Off. In my opinion, it was better than Blast Off because of the sound of the instruments. I really liked it a lot. It was only one minute long. Next is a song from the Black Hole version of You Gave Your Love to Me Softly with Moog in it. All that. It has plenty of guitar. A little bit longer than the original, just by a few seconds. Okay, when you're alone. Just a slow song, nothing much to it. Suzanne. Suzanne. Remember this from All Rats and the Blue Album Deluxe? Yeah. Uh, do you remember that line, even Izzy Slash and Axl Rose? Well, in this one, the original lyric is even Kurt Cobain and Axl Rose. I find that interesting. Actually, the reason why he took it out is because Kurt Cobain shot himself before the final version. So, he changed it just to uh, be respectful of Kurt. And next, there is no other one. Later, this song, after that demo was made, this song will be known as just no other one. There is no other one. It's the song from the Black Hole version of no other one. And it's awesome. It is. Give it a listen. I like it a lot. Let me wash it your sink. Very different, but I do love this song. Has more bass than guitar. That's the first time that's happened since Tired of Sex. Which, ironically, that's on here too. Uh, yeah. The solo kind of sounds like the No Other One chorus, but that's just what makes it so good. And Next, one that made it only on Pinkerton Deluxe, Waiting On You. Yeah, it never changed that much. I, in fact, like this one better than the finished version. Same with Suzanne, but yeah. Oh No, This Is Not For Me, very popular song from the Black Hole. Only 45 seconds, but now it's finally released. Everybody's happy. And this song goes into Tired of Sex. Yes, we got that version of Tired of Sex, finally. And as louder bass than the Pinkerton version ever did. Keyboards high-pitched. It's awesome. I like that, too. She's had a girl with the first verse of Now I Finally See at the beginning. Um, so that's good. It's good. What is this I find with... Maria and Jonas talking to each other about Dundo. So, there's that. And next, now I finally see the whole thing. Yeah, this is also one of my favorites, even though it's only about 40 seconds long. And yes, it only has two verses. Or maybe just the whole thing's a chorus. I don't know. But I do like this song a lot. It's my favorite short song from Songs from the Black Hole. Previously mentioned in my Songs from the Black Hole video. So, there is that. And now, Long Time Sunshine. Yeah, that's what it has on here. Now, I know it was released on Alone 1. But... That's it. It was released on Alone 3 with Super Friend. 
and Super Friend was also released on Alone 1, but in Alone 3 they are both the reprises. Yes, one track, two reprises. It's awesome. The Long Time Sunshine one is a bunch of high pitched rivers just singing, like maybe five or so, four, something. They're all singing, very enjoyable, very mellowing, relaxing. And Super Friends, same thing, except there are no voices. It's just guitar, bass, drums, that's it. Short. Very short. I'm Lonely on a Saturday Night. Slightly depressing song. Oh, sorry, I just left at the next one. Oh God, I'm Hungry. Guess what that's about. Rivers being hungry. Um... Yeah, I'm on fire, you're a liar. The title says it all. Yeah, okay. Next three songs, I Can't Break Your Heart Slow, Money Makes Me Happy, My Mind's On You. I haven't really listened to them much yet, I only got this on Christmas, so yeah. But... Oh, yeah, to the end of my string, also. But, on to 24, the next one. Defeat on the Hill. If you've ever listened to Alone 2, there was a song in there called Victory on the Hill. Very uprising, upbringing, made you feel powerful. This one's the opposite. It's depressing, it makes you feel down, makes you feel weak, powerless, all that. But I still love it. I still love it a lot. Okay. Clarinet Waltz. It's a nice song. This one's really relaxing, especially after Defeat on the Hill. In a perfect place. Uh, play the piano in it was not by Rivers Cuomo, though. It says, Unknown Pianist at LAVC on Clarinet Waltz. So, there you go. And a glorious moment. It's just kind of like I had an axe guitar in Alone 1. Nobody's talk or nobody's singing. It's just all talk. It's Rivers Cuomo talking into a recorder, talking about how he finally peed. And it was a glorious moment because his leg was starting to heal up. So, there it is. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the last of my album reviews. I hope you enjoyed them all. Be here in a few weeks when I do one of the biggest, when I do my biggest post ever. The story of, wait for it, wait for it, Godzilla. So, goodbye YouTube. Hope you enjoyed my album reviews, and see you later. Here we go. Me. I must be the happiest man on earth Because I just fell in love with my dream She is in my eyes, she is in my ears She is in my blood, she is in my tears I breathe love, I see you every day Even though my love is just of me Oh, she
YouTube, it's Jake Weeds. I got to like here once again with another review. This one is Death the False Metal by Weezer. With another request, so I did it. And this one won't be that hard to do actually. Turning up the radio. That's first track on here. It's a rebellious song, pretty fast. It's kind of like pork and beans telling people they can do whatever they want to do. And it's a very rebellious song. So, yeah, there's Turn Up the Radio. And next is I Don't Want Your Lovin'. A demo that everybody's heard. Except the demo was slow, acoustic, and this one's fast, electric, all that heavy, but... And this is a song that many believed was supposed to be on was supposed to be on songs from the black hole, but it wasn't. And basically, this song is just it's fast, heavy. It's one of my favorites off the album. I really like it a lot, and it's definitely the opposite of the demo. Definitely, blowing my stack to me kind of sounds like. A mixture between Pinkerton and the Red Album. I mean, there's not so much to it, and I'd say it's only an okay song. It's alright though. Uh, I mean, it's not bad or anything, but it's Pinkerton and the Red Album or something. I'd say that shouldn't really be mixed. I don't know. And next, we have Losing My Mind. Losing My Mind is just that one slow song off the album. Weezer has to have a slow song on every album, from the Blue Album to Death to False Battle. So, yeah. Losing My Mind is slow, depressing. much it's just about him not caring about anything anymore so yeah and on the next one is the complete opposite it's the heaviest one off the album everyone heaviest chords jam and all over the place all that good stuff but the lyrics seem to repeat themselves why I don't know they just I kinda do. So yeah, he says everyone a lot, obviously, more than anything else in the whole song. So yeah, I guess that's it. I mean, very heavy song plays the same thing, you know, over, over and over again. Um I'm a robot. It doesn't really sound weasery, I guess. It's just. I don't know. I'm a robot. It just doesn't. It sounds like if you heard this, you'd say to yourself, boy, they've come a long way since Pinkerton. And they have. I mean, it's. These albums are good, don't get me wrong, but. They're definitely not at their peak anymore. Definitely not the perfect Weezer anymore. Alright, now the next one is undoubtedly my favorite song of the whole album. I love this song so much. It's called... Er, wait. I skipped a song. Oh, well. Um, so, Trampoline. I have this song stuck in my head, so I don't know how I skipped it. But, yeah. Once again, something that doesn't really seem like Weezer would write. I mean, it's a good song. I really like it a lot. Trampoline. Yeah. That's trampoline right there. And now, now, finally, finally, here we go. The next song off the album is undoubtedly my favorite one. 
the best song on the whole entire album. I I really do like I don't want your loving a lot. Loving. But this one beats it for sure. It's the odd couple. Oh, I love this. It's about two opposites dating each other and they're like they just do all the opposite things, but they just have to be together. They fill each other's void. And it's an awesome, definitely, it's a must-listen-to Weezer song. Definitely, you should listen to it if you had this album, which I think many of you do. So, now, Autopilot. It's a good song. It sounds kind of like something from songs from the black hole. I don't really know what exactly to describe it besides it does sound like songs from the black hole. Very spacey, all that, moogs involved, all that kind of stuff. It's a good song. Definitely one of the better ones off this album. And, yeah, it's something we never thought we'd hear to say in short. And now on to the final track off of the album. It's called Unbreak My Heart. And it's not a Weezer song, it's a Tony Braxton song. And it's a cover, obviously. And it's a good song, sad song. If you watch the Tony Braxton music video, you'll see what it's about. And really sad, just, you know. But I do like it a lot. Very emotional track. There's a lot of emotion in it. And, yeah, it's just good. Oh, and that's it for the tracks. But if you want to know about the title, Death to False Metal, when Rivers and his brother leaves were young, and they heard, like, terrible metal music or somebody trying to be that, this is what they'd shout out, death to false metal. So, that's just a quick thing on where it came from, and I hope you enjoyed this video, YouTube, and I'll be back with another review next time. Oh, and don't forget to like me on Facebook. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Hello YouTube, it's Jake Weezer Godzilla here once again with another review. This time I uh, actually picked it out by myself again. So here it goes. This is an album I've been wanting to do for quite a while now. It's Weezer, the Red Album. Yep, their third self-titled album. First blue, then green, now red. So, I guess... This album, released in 2008, different from Blue and Green, unlike most would expect. They pretty much expected it to be the same as Blue, Green, and whatnot. But, it wasn't. The songs were totally different. It was still good. It's still good. I like this album a lot. So, I guess, well, here goes nothing. First off the album is Troublemaker, and uh, Troublemaker, big hit single, everybody remembers the video to this, or at least all Weezer fans do, where everybody was playing the guitars and stuff like that, pretty funny video, yep, but a lot of non-Weezer fans know about this song too, and they really like it, I haven't heard anything bad about this song, I think it's great. A great way to start off such a good album, anyway. And second one, this is where stuff begins to take a turn in a different direction, in a good way, in a good way. It's called The Greatest Man That Ever Lived. No, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I've been called this a few times. Um, a lot of variations. Rap, metal, rock and roll, regular Weezer, classic rock, all that stuff. Um... Yeah, what can I say? It's very different. It has 
everything in it. Anybody could enjoy this song. Sadly, it's only five minutes long, though. But, yeah. This is definitely a good song. I like the little speech in it where he tells you if you don't like it, you can shove it, but you don't like it, you love it. Because that's me right there. I love it. A lot. And Rivers probably is the greatest man that ever lived. Alright. On to the next song. Big YouTube hit, actually. Pork and Beans. Remember? All the YouTube videos from 2007 mixed into one with Weezer, the music video and all that. Nerdy video. But, awesome. <laughs> Still, a lot of non-Weezer fans know this song. And, yeah, actually, one of their bigger singles. Slightly well-known, too. I mean, pretty good. Alright. Heart songs. Slow song. Slightly sad. Talking about the old memories from the 1990s. Not Pinkerton or the Blue Album. Just memories of Rivers. And there's actually a slight mention to Nirvana's Nevermind. Once who knows. That'll be a review in the near future maybe. I don't know. But... Yep, yeah, Heart Songs is about all of River's old memories. All the music he liked and all that stuff. Alright. Everybody Get Dangerous. Now, this is definitely me. It's about this guy who has friends who are being total derelicts, delinquents, but as much as he wants to do, he just can't do it. It's a very fast song. Very funny, too. Very funny. Talking about juveniles and delinquents. Uh, okay, next song. Dreamin'. I don't know. This is just a bunch of mumbo-jumbo blabbering. But it's a good song. It's about dreaming in the daytime, dreaming in the nighttime. Whatever. Alright, now... We're talking. This, I think, is what makes this album what it is. These next three songs. Thought I knew. Not really a Weezer song, but Weezer made it their own. It was actually the, a song written by Brian Bell. Not for Weezer, though, but for his other band, The Relationship. And Brian Bell did get lead vocals in this, so... Yeah. I, I like it. I Personally, I like the Relationships version a little bit better, but this version's alright, too. It's kind of Rivers mixed up version, but still, Brian Bell lead vocals. Awesome. Love it. Next song, Cold Dark World. This song wasn't sung by Rivers, either. It was sung by Scott Shriner, the bassist. And now this is a dark song right here. It even has dark in the name. It's a kind of a creepy song, too. I mean, if you listen to it. But what would you expect? It's Scott Schreiner. He kind of helped write the song, and he sung it. So, I mean, I'd expect nothing less. And I don't think any other Weezer fan would either, knowing Scott Schreiner. So, alright, next song, Automatic, sung by Patrick Wilson, the drummer. Now this song, for a drummer singing, actually isn't that bad at all. It's kind of like the Foo Fighters. Dave Grohl was a drummer for Nirvana, but did the Foo Fighters turn out that bad? No, they were awesome. And that's what I thought this song was, awesome. Not as good as Cold Dark World or Thought I Knew, but still, lovable song. Gotta listen to it. Rivers plays drums. Patrick Wilson sang, and I just heard a large, large noise, whatever. Okay, and now on to the last song. The Angel and the One. Okay, slow song, depressing song, and the second longest Weezer song ever released at six minutes. 
so, well, not so much to say about this song. Besides, I got it stuck in my head right now. So, yeah, that's not it. Because this right here, you see that? Probably not. Okay, this red album deluxe. So that means we got four more songs, but I'm kind of gonna, you know, bunch it up into one real quick here. I don't really like the B-sides all too much, really, to be honest. I mean, they weren't that good. But, you know. But anyways, the good one out of all these, the best was Pig. I love that song. The other ones, not so much. But Pig, definitely good. I guess they're worth listening to. If you have your own opinion and you think they're good, that's fine with me. Um... But the Red Album itself is awesome. Not as good as Blue or Green. Not as good as Pink. But still good. Still good. Very good. I like the Red Album a lot. I think it's better than Ratitude, Hurley, all that. So, I don't understand why the album gets trashed so much. I thought it was awesome. Okay. And you probably did too, if you're a Weezer fan. So, I guess that's it. YouTube, goodbye. Hello, YouTube. It's Jake Weezergutzilla here once again with my very first request review. And, well, it was on Maladroid, so I'm going to do that. Here is Maladroid. It's a good Weezer album, definitely. Um, has its good songs. Not as good as the old Weezer, like, Blue Album, Pinkerton. Uh, but, it's definitely good. This was their very first album with Scott Shriner. And it was also their heaviest album. For reasons, well, you'll hear in the songs if you listen to it. It was, I wouldn't say their worst album, but it wasn't their best either. It was kind of an in-between album. It was pretty good, so let's start out this review. Okay. First off is American Gigolo. It's a nice way to start off knowledge, right? It's pretty heavy. Instruments, heavy, deep. Very fast speed. It's a good song. Vocals, they're good. They're good. And next, the first single off of Maladroit, Dope Nose. Picks up where American Gigolo left off. Same speed, same instrumental tone, same vocal tone, all that. So, yeah, and the video is pretty funny. It's, I don't know, if you listen to the lyrics, it's kind of, I don't know, it's a very weird song. I guess it's what it feels like to be on dope. I don't know. But the next one is one of my favorite songs of all time. It's called Keep Fishing. And yes, I love this song so much, I think it could be on Pinkerton. Not the Blue Album, Pinkerton. It's just that good. I love it so much. The video was funny. Awesome. And the song, definitely the best song off of Maladroid. Definitely. One of the best Weezer songs of all time. If you think that Scott Triner's not that good, you need to listen to this. Keep Fishing. One of the best Weezer songs ever. I'd say maybe top ten. Definitely. It's just that good. Now the next one, Take Control, that one's definitely their heaviest off of this album. It's 
almost what makes this album what it is. It's slow. Has an awesome solo, by the way. Um, vocals, depressing, deep. Not really like Pinkerton style depressing, but it's got its own little neat way. It's slightly long, I would say. I don't know. So, yep. Death and Destruction. Very laid back song. The opposite of what the title is because it's just laid back, slowed vocals, slowed down instruments. Yeah, basically, that's it. I don't know. Slob. Awesome song, too. I love this one. Not nearly as much as Keep Fishing, but it's definitely my second favorite off of the album. Talking about not to be a slob and get a life, or get a wife, as he says in the song, but you get what I'm saying. It's the pitch of this one. Slow instruments, fast vocals. I mean, it's it's good. It's good. It's almost a must listen. And burnt jam. I I haven't really listened to that much, but from what I remember, it's a fun loving song. Kind of to me, it sounded like that. Space rock, the same way. And slave. Slave was a really heavy, heavy song off this album. I mean, yeah. I don't really know what to say about this album. I mean, it is good, it is good, but still. It doesn't have that much of a story behind it. It's no offense to the person who requested this by the way. Fall Together. Heavy. Heavy, definitely heavy, fast, fast speed, fast pitch, all that. And then possibilities and love explosions. I can't really. This is a hard album actually for me to do. They're just. I don't know. I'm gonna skip them. In December. Fitting song to close off the album. I love this one too. It's good song, fast, slow, whatever it is. It's in between, I'd say. So, yeah, that's Maladroit. One of my. This is my quickest review ever. But overall, if you want a real rating on this album, I'd say three out of five, definitely. Although keep fishing. You gotta listen to it. So, here's the band, and here's the cover. If you're a real Weezer fan, you should definitely get this album, because of Keep Fish. And that's all. Oh, by the way, don't forget to like my new Facebook page, Jake Weezer Godzilla. I'll give you the link. It should be right down there in the description. So, yeah, just do that, and remember, if you have any requests you want, just tell me, I'll do it, if I, if you don't think I know the album, because I probably don't, or just send me something, send me a few songs, actually send me all the songs, because I want to view them all, so, yeah, okay, thank you YouTube, and goodbye. Hello YouTube, it's Jake Weezer Godzilla here once again with something different this time. Today I'm actually going to be doing kind of a versus thing. Pinkerton versus the Blue Album. This is, well, special. So, here's Pinkerton. Here's the Blue Album. Alright, so, the Blue Album was... Weezer's first album. It was obviously recorded first, and then Pinkerton was second. And Pinkerton, as we all know, wasn't actually supposed to be released, but since Sharp re released his album, Return of the Rentals, Songs from the Black Hole, was scrapped. And, um, 
So, yeah, let's get started. Okay, now let's start out with My Name is Jonas versus Tired of Sex. So, Tired of Sex is a bit more. It's heavier and more raw than My Name is Jonas. And um, My Name is Jonas has one of the most famous guitar hunters of all time. But Tired of Sex just has one of the more what should be famous enters of Weezer and well I mean Tired of Sex was a song from the Black Hole and My Name is Jonas was Strictly Blue album and it's well known for the guitar as to where Tired of Sex is known for the vocals but in my opinion Tired of Sex would win not by much, but it would. And now this next one. It's going to be hard. No one else versus Get You. Get You picks up where Tired of Sex left off with all the raw intensity. And no one else. It's different than my name is Jonas. It sounds like something that was actually, in my opinion, recorded in maybe around 1991 and 1992. And, um... It just sounds like a bit of an older song. And I like them both. But the solo of No One Else would probably win it over. So, yeah. The second one is No One Else. And now No One Else leads into The World Has Turned and Left Me Here. Which will face no other one. So, they're both the first sad songs of the album and sad but the world has turned left me here is a lot longer than no other one and well no other one is just like tired of sex and gets you a song from the black hole and um this is actually really hard for me and I don't know but I'm just going to say no other one. Because I like that one more. And now... This next one is going to be pretty easy for me to do. Buddy Holly versus Why Bother. Buddy Holly... This... used to be my favorite Weezer song of all time. Even though I still like Pinkerton better than the Blue Album. And, um... Well... It's a lot longer than Why Bother, and Why Bother has a tendency to repeat, like, pretty much almost all they say is Why Bother, it's gonna hurt me, it's gonna kill when you deserve me. So where Buddy Holly spices it up, and actually use different sounding solos than a normal Weezer song, so Buddy Holly definitely wins this one. And now, I'm done versus Across the Sea. Across the Sea is I think unless I'm not thinking right Cross the Sea is the first one to use an actual piano in it and um well Long Time Sunshine doesn't count and um it's different it's different than Undone or any of the other songs for that matter but Undone has lines from Jason Cropper in it which, I mean, I don't really see what that has to do with the music, but the Sweater Song has one of the best lines of Weezer of all time. If you want to destroy my sweater, pull the string as I walk away. But across the sea, it's more slower and can relate to real life, and it is based on a Rivers Cuomo story. And, well... Across the Sea wins. Not by much, just like Tired of Sex, but it does. And, um, let's see. Uh huh. Okay. Well, The Good Life in Surf Wax America. Both very fast songs, and, um, songs that everybody can dance to and smile and think to. And, well, 
for starters, the good life is a bit longer, and it is a single off of Pinkerton. The first of two. And, um, the good life has. I don't know how to describe these two songs because they really don't have anything to do with each other. But, I'm just going to say the winner for this one The Good Life. Okay. And now the next one. This one I've been waiting for. This one's the one I want it to happen, actually. Say It Ain't So versus Al Scorcho. Yeah, the two, if you will, big ones off the album. To me, these two are like arch rivals. I don't know, I just think of it that way. And, um, I think Say It Ain't So is very, very overrated, as I've said in the past. And I think El Scorcho is very, very underrated. However, El Scorcho and Say It Ain't So both start out with very famous Weezer riffs. Which, it's funny because the riff of El Scorcho is known more than the actual song. And the bridge in Say It Ain't So is a bit more of a slower, darker, turn, darker tone, if you will. As to where the El Scorcho bridge is very, very fast. And everybody loves it. Well, it has Brian Bell vocalizing in it. And, um, the solo for El Scorcho is very weird. But, to me, the instruments in both solos sound the same. And, uh, well, I mean, don't get me wrong, I do like Say It Ain't So for what it's worth. And I also like El Scorcho for what it's worth. And, I'd really, definitely... I have to choose that little score show. So the score for Pinkerton and the Blue Album is Blue Album 2 and Pinkerton 5. Alright. And now we have Pink Triangle and In the Garage. moment of silence real quick um okay so in the garage is an early recorded song as we know it wasn't like Jason Cropper was in it but Brian Bell was in it and he was also in Pink Triangle pretty obviously and I guess both these can relate to real life in the garage being more from a male's perspective who is very lonely and shunned from society is to where Pink Triangle is once again from a male's view and it's he just got dumped by a lesbian so I guess they're both feeling very lonely both from a lonely perspective but Pink Triangle is more of the male being mad and, um, in the garage is just the male thinking he can't do anything. He'll never be part of society. And it's just a more depressing song than Pink Triangle. But, I don't know, I'm going to call this one a tie. They both get a point. So it's 7-3 to three now, Pinkerton. And this one's going to be obvious for me. Holiday versus Falling For You. Basically, Pink Triangle goes into Falling For You in a medley sort of way. It's where Holiday's just its own thing. It's kind of split off from the rest of the Blue Album. It's about more happy times. And Falling For You's about... I'd have to guess the same male from Pink Triangle actually finding somebody and trying to get her. And, well, seems like he's succeeding. But... For obvious reasons, like the solo of this song, I'm gonna guess Falling For You wins. So, 8-3 to three, Pinkerton. Now the two slow songs, Butterfly and Only In Dreams, or should I say Only In Dreams versus Butterfly.
Okay. So, I mean, Butterfly just starts out with pure vocals and guitar. Except for the alternate version, of course. And, um, Only in Dreams is the only one with a bass intro. Which is very interesting, but Only in Dreams is also the longest one. I'm not saying Butterfly isn't long, but it's pretty dwarfed compared to Only in Dreams. And Only in Dreams is my second favorite Rock the Blue album. And Butterfly, eh, I don't know. Could be my favorite, could be my least favorite. But, this is a very hard decision. I'd have to go with Butterfly. Just because it's the slowest song Weezer's ever created and it's most peaceful. Which I'm not saying Only in Dreams isn't peaceful. I mean, it is very, but I'm just going to say Butterfly takes cake for this one. Oh, but it's not over yet. You see, we have... Hang on. Blue Album Deluxe and Pinkerton Deluxe. Alright, this is going to be interesting. So, this one's also going to be very hard. Pinkerton Deluxe is gigantic compared to the Blue Album Deluxe. And, um, well, it's really all I can say. I guess let's do the kitchen tape versus the B-sides of Pinkerton. So, the kitchen tape. I'm trying to see which songs are on there. There it is. Undone. Paper Face. Only in Dreams. Okay. So those three verses... You gave your love to me softly, devotion, waiting on you. I just threw out the love of my dreams, and I swear it's true. Now, I mean, I guess, I guess, like, all three together would be better than, say, waiting on you. But devotion, I just threw out the love of my dreams, and I swear it's true. Just mind-blowingly amazing so the b-sides defeat the kitchen tape and let's see let's do pre-productions versus live tracks or no never mind live tracks versus the live tracks all right so got no one else Jamie my name is Jonas, Surf Wax America, and well, since there are a lot of live tracks from Pinkerton, I'll put the Say It Ain't So original album mix in with them. And uh, the Pinkerton live tracks are different versions of El Scorcho, The Good Life, Pink Triangle, and Why Bother. So. Let's start out with the disc one live tracks. They're just basic, they're acoustic, and they both take place during Weezer's first, you know, tour where they played the Pinkerton songs. It's where the Blue Album, it's just Weezer's first tour, you know, before they were playing in front of a huge group, they were playing in front of those very, very small groups. So, I mean, the live tracks from the Blue Album beat the Disc 1 live tracks on Pinkerton. But the Disc 2, ooh, these are different. These are, when Weezer started to get big and very interesting, I'm just going to say the Say It Ain't So original album mix is kind of like kicked out <laughs> from these songs. And, um, well... All I can say is, this two Pinkerton beats it. So, overall, 
I did say the Pinkerton ones. Pinkerton live tracks wins. So, next we're going to be doing the pre recordings. Or how about just two of the pre recordings versus the tracking roughs? Okay. So, do the Only in Dreams pre recording. Or, never mind, never mind. That was, I read that wrong. Okay. So, how about we do, just for the heck of it, this is, I'm going to get off track here, I swear it's true, versus I swear it's true. The Blue Album Deluxe version of I swear it's true, versus the Pinkerton Deluxe version of I swear it's true. Now, these are both almost evenly matched. And this is just going to be really quick. But the Pinkerton one has more of the Moog in it, and it's finished. And it still sounds very raw, much like the Pinkerton ones do. So, Pinkerton Deluxe, I swear it's true, wins. And, um, let's see. Tracking roughs versus pre-production recordings. Okay, there are only two then. Lullaby for Wayne and I Swear It's True versus Tired of Sex and Get You. Tracking roughs. Okay, so Lullaby for Wayne. I mean, I've listened to it a few times, but it's not something I've listened to. So compared to the Tired of Sex tracking rough, which I listen to a lot, it's out. So it's pretty much only in Drew. Sorry. I Swear It's True versus Get You. And get you isn't as good as the uh, tired of sex tracking rough. And um, well, the I swear it's true on blue album as I said is very good. So I don't know. I'd have to say barely get you wins. And that's it. That's all I have to say about that. Now, how about for the final stretch? We have the B sides from the Blue Album: Michael and Carly, Suzanne, My Avalon, Jamie, um, that's all. Versus, you won't get with me tonight. Long time sunshine, getting up and leaving. And tragic girl. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so the B sides like Jamie are better than a lot of the songs off the actual album. Like Say It Ain't So and even My Name is Jonas. Um that's my opinion anyway. But, let's see. As we know, a lot of the songs like You Won't Get With Me Tonight and Long Time Sunshine are songs from the black hole. So we're pretty much pitting two albums against one here. So, You Won't Get With Me Tonight versus Michael and Carly. Oh yeah, we're doing this again. Um, You Won't Get With Me Tonight strictly because of the solo in the vocals beats Michael and Carly. So how about we go on to Long Time Sunshine versus Suzanne. Once again, the most grandest ending versus a blue album B side. This is five songs mixed into one at the end of Coda Mix. And um well it should be pretty obvious that Long Time Sunshine defeats Suzanne. It's just clearly obvious right there. I think if you're a Weezer fan, you will agree with me if you've heard this song. And, um, Getting Up and Leaving versus My Avalon. Getting Up and Leaving, another song that can relate to real life a lot of times, versus about a 40 second song. 
So, I mean, I'll let you be the judge of that one. I think it's getting up and leaving over my Avalon, but yeah. And now, finally, this is going to be the toughest one of them all. We saved the best for last. Tragic Girl versus Jamie. Oh yeah. So, Jamie has powerful intro. You can hear the bass kick in and the drums and everything. But it starts out with guitar. Then you hear River's, River's voice kicks in. And Tragic Girl starts out with vocals and guitar. And then it will later get more powerful. And, uh, well... Yeah, Jamie has the better solo, I'm going to say, but, um, Tragic Girl has the better chorus, and they both have equal verses. Like, I like them both the same, and, uh, well, I really don't know on this one. Um, I mean... Jamie was originally supposed to be a single off the album instead of Sadie, so, or, sorry, Undone. And, um, well, Tragic Girl wasn't known about till 2010, and it's actually talked about inside the Pinkerton Diaries. And, uh, Jamie was written after a real-life person. Jamie Young? Mrs. Young, yeah. Jamie was supposed to have the B-side, Mrs. Young. However, Tragic Girl was a very deep underground song that nobody knew about before Pinkerton Deluxe came out. And, uh, I mean, Tragic Girl just ends all of Pinkerton Deluxe. It's the very last track. And then Jamie, well, it's just what pretty much makes Blue Album Deluxe what it is. But, uh, I'm gonna have to say, Jamie wins. Yeah, it's a hard decision, but I honestly have to say that. Now, overall, let's do Pinkerton Deluxe and Pinkerton versus Blue Album Deluxe and Blue Album. Yeah, this is what we've all been waiting for. So, you've heard me discuss, and if you haven't noticed, I kind of liked more of the Pinkerton stuff than I did the Blue Album. And in my opinion, Pinkerton defeats the Blue Album. So, that's it for this special, special video. And I'll see you next time, probably doing a review. So, goodbye for now. Hello guys, it's Jake Weezer Godzilla here once again, and today I'm going to be doing another album review, and it's actually going to be on Weezer's The Blue Album. Now, let's start out with the songs. My name is Jonas. It starts out with one of the most famous guitar intros of all time, or at least for Weezer, I would say. Uh, the song... I don't know how to describe it, but I do know that Jonas is one of the main characters in Songs from the Black Hole, and he was inspired by this song. And now, No One Else is about a girl who doesn't pay any attention to her boyfriend, and her boyfriend wants her gone, which would lead into The World Is Turned and Left Me Here, where the boy realizes he's done. A big, he's made a big mistake, basically, and he wants her back, and uh, he's gone back to the way things were before she was there with him, and those two songs are connected, whoops, I dropped that, uh, no cracks, uh, so those two songs are connected, and yeah, Let's move on to the next song. Buddy Holly, the most famous Weezer song of all time, undoubtedly. It's what made them big in the 1990s. 
simply because of the video. The video took place on the set of Happy Days. And this was back in 1994, so nobody really expected that they could do that. And basically, it's a great song. It's a must listen if you haven't heard it. And uh, Undone, the sweater song. It's also one of the more famous songs of all time. And in the background, you hear a lot of speaking. And uh, I think Jason Cropper is actually in this one. I think, he, not doing guitar, but he's one of the voices in the background. And basically, they're talking about going to a party, not having any rides. And the guy who you hear from his point of view, he doesn't want to go, but he's going to have to. Surf Wax America is about, it's more of a surfer's perspective where all he wants to do is surf and he gets caught by the undertow and uh, well he's never coming back that's what you hear in the lyrics and now the song I want to address the least say it ain't so now I like this song for what it's worth but I mean it shouldn't be as big as people say it is a lot of people, when I wear my Weezer gear out in public, people are like, Oh, Weezer, say it ain't so. And I hate hearing that everywhere I go. I honestly like to hear Buddy Holly, Island in the Sun, which I do hear Island in the Sun sometimes, and even Beverly Hills. But say it ain't so isn't the number one single off the Blue Album, and it was never really intended to be big. So, I don't know, everywhere you go, and you just hear, oh, say it ain't so. It kind of gets annoying after a while. In the Garage was a very early song. I think it was recorded before Weezer even got together, to be honest. Well, not recorded, but Rivers Cuomo wrote it. And it's about how he's in the garage, making all of his stupid songs with the stupid words, and it's overall a great song. Holiday, I don't really listen to this song as much as I used to, so I'll just try my best. It's about more happy times, going out, enjoying yourself, and all that. And now, well, that's all I have to say about Holiday, to be honest with you. And now we have Only in Dreams, the only Weezer song to date. It starts out with a bass intro, and also it is the longest Weezer song. It's um, eight minutes. It's not that long compared to a lot of songs out there. And yeah, it's a really slow song. There's more instrumental parts in this than vocals. And I don't know if I like this or Buddy Holly better, but Only in Dreams is another must listen off of the blue album and now that is not it because here I have the deluxe edition yes I'm gonna need to look over this one it has Michael and Carly watch Michael and Carly are Rivers Cuomo's best friends in fact they are the biggest Weezer fans of all time and they died in a bus accident and they also had a sister but yeah, Rivers Cuomo wrote this song for them, and what's weird is they died in 1997, but I think this song was recorded before that, I'm not really sure. Now, Suzanne, it appeared on the Mallrats DVD, interesting song, it's much faster, a lot of guitar, very, I don't know, should have been a Blue Album song as opposed to a b-side. My Avalon is an early song. It's one of the many demos that Weezer had. And it's very short. I think it's like 45 seconds. Something around there. But yes, it is extremely short. And that's all I have to say there. Jamie, personally my favorite b-side, is... It was supposed to be one of the singles off the Blue Album. And uh, its B-side was supposed to be Mrs. Young, 
which would later turn out to be Please Let That Be You by The Rentals. And, um, well, it was scrapped and became a B-side after Matt Sharp took Mrs. Young. And now we have live tracks like My Name is Jonas, Surf Wax America, Jamie, No One Else, and Undone, or, sorry, not Undone. And, um, well, those are the live tracks, and they're all acoustic. That needs to be noted. And Undone, Paper Face, Only in Dreams, and, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, they all appeared on the kitchen tape, which was Weezer's big demo before the Blue Album came out. And Jason Cropper was involved in this, and that's how he became known as a member of Weezer. And this, this kitchen tape was the second demo out of three. And, yeah. And now... Lullaby for Wayne... I swear it's true, and say it ain't so, or lullaby, sorry, lullaby for Wayne and I swear it's true are both pre-recordings for the Blue album, which basically means they were recorded in the Blue sessions, and you know, I swear it's true was also the finished version was recorded and put on Pinkerton Deluxe, which it it's better than the one on the Blue album, but. Blue Album 1 is still good. And Say It Ain't So original album mix, it's really not that different from the original. I mean, I think there might be a little less bass and a little more guitar, which, personally, I would like that better. But that's just me. And, uh, yeah. So, that's basically it. And, uh, another thing that should be noted is this obviously was Weezer's first album and it was the first out of two of the Sharp albums to come out. The other one would be known as Pinkerton. So that is the Blue Album. And just to let you know, on the Blue Album Deluxe, Disc 1 is just the original album. And Disc 2 is a little bit bigger than Disc 1. It has 14 tracks as opposed to 10. And, well, yeah, so, I guess this is it for the Blue Album review. Be here next time when I review either another album, a game, or anything else. Goodbye for now. Hello YouTube, it's Jake Weezer Godzilla, and I've decided between the Blue Album songs and the Black Hole, and I've chosen songs from the Black Hole just because it is a more controversial album than the Blue Album. And... Well, it's a concept album. Here's the storyline. So, Star Corps Academy is training six men, well not really, six astronauts to go save the planet Namus, which is in terrible danger, being swallowed by its sun. So they got to save, if there is any life there, they've got to save it. And the crew members... One is a chef, her name's Laurel. One is a robot, his name is M1. And uh, four regular astronauts, or, or three, are Dundo, Juan, and Maria. And the captain is Jonas. Jonas fell in love with Maria at the Academy, Star Corps Academy. And, um, well, wait. they realized that. And Dundo knew it. And they, after they all went off, it kind of came out. And Dundo didn't like Maria and called her a bitch, and that really pissed her off. So she, she's. That's where the song, Who You Calling Bitch, comes in. You can hear her calling, hear him calling her that, and blast off. So, basically, that's the storyline, and. Jonas falls in love with Laurel along the way, so later he has to choose between Maria and Laurel, and he chooses Maria, but Maria's had sex with Dundo, so it really kind of sucks. And, um, let's start out with the actual review now. 
so, blast off, who you calling, bitch, you won't get with me tonight, is the beginning, which, it's a funny storyline, it's just between Dundo, Maria, and Jonas, then we progress onto, oh no, this is not for me, tired of sex, and that's just between Maria and Jonas, and then super friend, she, her super friend, and you gave your love to me softly, which is just, Jonas finally starts to come onto Laurel, and then, get you, or waiting on you first, which is Maria trying to get Jonas back, and, um, then we have get you, and I just have the love of my dreams. Which is between Laurel and Jonas. It's finally where Laurel starts to fall in love with Jonas. And Jonas knows now that he has to choose. And then... Well... We've got... No other one. Which Jonas thinks, but we don't know who it's about yet. Then we've got Devotion, where we finally find out he has chosen Maria. And then... What is this I find? It's finally where he knows that... Jonas, er, Jonas finally finds out that Dundo and Maria have been having sex a lot. And then we've got Why Bother in Long Time Sunshine, which is now just between Jonas and himself. And he's giving up Maria and Laurel, and the ship's finally beginning to land. And, um,. Well, that, those are all the songs from it, but there were some more added in, such as Purification of Water, I Don't Want Your Loving, and, uh, oh yeah, I Do, and Oh Lisa. I Don't Want Your Loving was a rejection from the Weezer album called Make Believe, and... Well, Purification of Water was just Rivers Cuomo's experiences, bad experiences, of when he went to Mexico. And I Do and Olisa are bonus tracks off of the Green album. So, they kind of took them out. And Rivers Cuomo said that they're really not supposed to be in there. So, that ended that controversy. And then... Well... The Weezer fans knew that instead of those four songs, there would be, Oh Jonas, please remember, come to my pod, all that stuff that we all know and love. And, well, those demos were leaked onto the internet in 2002, and that's finally when we started to know about songs from the black hole. And we knew that it was originally supposed to... Well, I wouldn't say replace, but Pinkerton replaced songs in the black hole. And, yeah, that's pretty much the story. Now, as we all know, the songs in the black hole, Tired of Sex, Get You, No Other One, and Why Bother are all on Pinkerton. Which, yeah, just makes it interesting that Rivers would put those on Pinkerton. Now... Recently, in September, which, this is still September, but earlier in September, uh, fan made, song to the black hole made by Operation Space Opera was put on the internet, which fulfilled songs from the black hole, finally, and they added in some new songs, like, Oh Jonas, I Hear You, and, uh, Touchdown. Touchdown is pretty awesome. But they added in some new stuff like Instrumental Maria's theme, which is Instrumental O Jonas. Um and they added in No Other One Reprise. And they did the special code mix of Long Time Sunshine it mixed with the original. It's a hybrid. So that makes it well, what everybody was hoping for. 
just all out sellers in the black hole. And, uh, uh, it seems like nowadays Songs in the Black Hole is getting bigger because we finally finished it. Rivers Cuomo finally finished it. The fan made covers are out. But, think about it. Back when this was, Songs in the Black Hole was found out about, it was very controversial. And, everybody just, I can't. I can't even find the words. It was just a big thing. I'll just leave it at that. And, yeah, there's Songs in the Black Hole. That's all I can really say about it. So, um, be here next time when I discuss something new. Goodbye for now, YouTube. Hello, YouTube. It's Jake Weezer Godzilla here again for my second review. And, um,. This one, unlike the last one, will not be a game review. It will be an album review on quite possibly my favorite album of all time, Pinkerton, released by Weezer in 1996. Now, here, here's Pinkerton. Let me show you. This is it. Now, this album, it was trashed by the Rolling Stones magazine. For reasons I don't know, but they uh, also trashed Weezer's other album, Blue Album. But I'm not gonna get into the Blue Album today. Um, so yeah, Rivers Cuomo didn't make any albums for a long time because of his issues with Matt Sharp and what happened to Pinkerton. And he never said he, he said he was never gonna make an album again, which you know many people thought was true. But let's just talk about Pinkerton. Pinkerton was released instead of Weezer's concept album, Songs from the Black Hole. But it does have a lot of concept to it. I mean, it's raw sounding and awesome. The first four tracks... Hang on. Yeah, those four. Um, they were originally off of Songs from the Black Hole. Tired of Sex gets you no other one, and Why Bother? Watch, I I love those songs so much, and um, they were supposed to sound different on Songs in the Black Hole. If you get Alone Three, the Pinkerton Years, you'll know how it sounds. But um, yeah, these were awesome. I mean, the mood and everything were. Just unbelievable. And the next song on it, uh, yeah, you see it right there, uh, Cross the Sea. It was a good song. It was a great song, in fact. And believe it or not, it was my least favorite song off the album. Why? For reasons I don't know. Um, but it, I still love it. That just shows you how much I love this album. And, well, it's a catchy song. Like, I can't stop singing it once I hear it. But, yeah, it's after the songs from Black Hole. It, it's the fifth track on the album. Already we're there. And, well, yeah. Next we have the singles. We have The Good Life. Which, well, it's about River Cuomo's words here. It's about an old man shaving his beard and whatever, not being the life of the party for two years, I don't know, something like that. And the next one, their number one hit single, El Scorcho. And it's awesome, I love it, I was gonna, it's, I sung it on here on YouTube with Medley one time, and I'm planning on singing it at the talent show, my school talent show next year, so... I just love that song. How stupid is it? I can't talk about it. I gotta sing about it and make a record of it. That's one of my favorite lines of any song ever created. Um, next we have Pink Triangle. Which, apparently for a lot of you guys on YouTube, I've seen the comments on the Pink Triangle video. And it, apparently a lot of you guys have to relate to this. Which... I don't yet. I have 
to relate to the next song, which we'll get to here in a second. And um, let me note that, well, the next song is called Falling For You. Pink Triangle and Falling For You are the only medley on the Pinkerton album. Oh, and I forgot to show you. Yeah, there they are. And, um, well, they're just beautiful songs, to say the least. Beautiful Falling For You, yeah, now I'm getting into it. Falling For You has the best solo I've ever heard in my life. And it's just, it almost wanted to make me cry. Makes me want to cry, sorry. Um, and the last song, sadly, off of Pinkerton is, well, it is a sad song. So, kind of ironic. It's called Butterfly. Yeah. It's an acoustic. It's the only acoustic off of Pinkerton. And, well, it's really all I can say for it. Very slow. Very sad. And, yeah. So, that's it for Pinkerton. But not this video. This video is not over yet. Surprise, surprise, we have Pinkerton Deluxe, yeah. This album has two discs. Okay, half of the first disc is the original album, which we already talked about. But the second half is B-Sides and more. You Gave Your Love to Me Softly, released on Angus the Angus video, but this is a different version. The Angus had Moog in it and stuff like that. This has no Moog. This has guitars. And I love it. It's just, it's my favorite song of all time. So yeah, that's enough to say. Devotion, let's go Devotion and Waiting on You. Let's just do those two together. Those are songs from the Black Hole. And along with the Good Life radio mix, and the Good Life Live, an acoustic, and Pink Triangle Live, an acoustic, and another song we'll get to here in a second. Um, it was a B-side, B-sides to The Good Life, and they're beautiful, they were all songs from the Black Hole too, if I already mentioned that, I'm sorry, but um, yeah, they're just beautiful songs, Moogs and um, Moog Keyboard. And, um, well, at least Devotion, I can't remember if they're in Waiting or You or Not. Waiting on You. And, um, yeah. The other song that's a B-side off The Good Life. One of my favorites of all time. It's not as good as You Gave Your Love to Me Softly, but it's still pretty good. It's I Just Threw Out the Love of My Dreams. It has a load of moog. A load of bass and a beautiful solo. Not as beautiful as Falling For You, but still. And not to mention, it's the only Weezer song ever with uh, lead female vocals. And the woman who is singing in this song is Rachel Hayden. Beautiful singer, beautiful singer. Um, she left. Well, she didn't really leave, but she went to the rentals with Matt Sharp, which Pinkerton was Matt Sharp's last Weezer album. He only had two, the blue album and Pinkerton. So, yeah. Uh, and, of course, we gotta mention I Swear It's True. The pre-production was on Blue Album Deluxe, but they released the actual song on Pinkerton Deluxe. You can't really see it. There it is, so. And, um, it's awesome. It's been two and a half years now. Yeah, yeah, there you go. And now let's get to disc two. Okay. You Won't Get With Me Tonight. Another song from Songs from the Black Hole. It's incredible. It has Moog and guitar solo. It's incredible. It's, like, jaw-dropping. And then we have all these live tracks, which I don't really want to talk about. And they're just like the Good Life El Scorcher, Why Bother, and Pink Triangle. That's all I'm going to say about them. And, um, yeah. 
Across the Sea Piano Noodles. It's just the intro for Across the Sea, and then he says, please stop the tape, like, 30 seconds after. Butterfly alternate take isn't that much different from the original Butterfly, except it has an intro where you just hear River Squamo with no instruments. Yesterday I went outside. And then it starts playing, and you hear him singing. It's just awesome. It's a little bit different. And I think it's a bit faster. Just a tiny bit faster than um, the original. Um, of course, I have to mention Long Time Sunshine. Not Long Time Sunshine, but Long Time Sunshine. Okay. It's awesome. Long Time Sunshine, if you remember, was released on the Alone album. Alone. Alone. The home recordings of Rufus Cuomo. But this is an actual band version, where in, it's a special codex, and in the end, I'm, I'm gonna sing it, so if you have a problem, who cares. Why bother, it's gonna hurt me, it's gonna kill when you desert me. He is in my eyes, he is in my ears, he is in my blood. He is in my tears. No, there is no other one. No, there is no other one. Can't have any other one, even though. Blast off up to the stars we go. Leave behind everything I used to know. Somebody's given me a whole lot of money to do what I think I want to do. Why am I still feeling blue? Oh, what an undo, oh, why? That's what you hear in the special code of Max. I'm sorry for that, but I had to use it out. And I know I said You Gave Your Love to Me Softly is my favorite song of all time, but Long Time Sunshine, it's definitely up there. And I like it better than the Alone version. Let's, I'm just going to say that. Getting Up and Leaving, I don't is recorded for the Pinkerton Sessions and it's on disc 2 and it has a star by it which indicates previously unreleased so that's just a quick mention it should have been a original Pinkerton but they just couldn't squeeze in an 11th track I don't know why maybe to match it up with the blue album which had 10 tracks and um Tyrus Sex and Get You has Tracking roughs, which, if you want to get an adrenaline rush from music, if you're a Weezer fan like me, you have to listen to those. Those are going to be the biggest adrenaline rush ever. And, of course, last but most certainly not least, Tragic Girl. It's a very slow song, and it's sad, much like Butterfly. And how ironic, they both end the albums. Um, yeah. Tragic Girl, another song off of Pinkerton, which Rivers Cuomo discussed on the Re Weezer Cruise. And, um, yeah. That's basically all I have to say about Pinkerton. I mean, and, uh, I guess, you know what? Be here next time when I do either Blue Album or songs from the black hole. I'll surprise you. Goodbye, YouTube. Oh, I'm so tall, can't get over me. Oh, I'm so low, can't get under me. I must be all these things. For I just threw out the love of my dreams. She's in my eyes, she is in my ears. She's in my blood, she is in my tears. I breathe love and see her every day Even though my love is the world way Oh, she's got me wandering My righteousness is crumbling Never before have I felt this way Know what is right but what for her to stay I must be made of steel, 
Full ride just throughout the lap of my dreams She's in my eyes, she is in my ears She is in my blood, she is in my tears I breathe love and see her every day Even though my love is a world away Oh, she's got me wandering my righteousness is crumbling <laughs> Oh, she's got me wandering My righteousness this is coming, and I see her every day, even though my love is a world of way. She's in my eyes, she is in my ears, she's in my blood, she is in my tears. I breathe love and see her every day, even though my love is a world away. Blushed off up to the stars we go, and leave behind everything I used to know. Somebody's given me a whole lot of money to do what I think I want to do. So why am I still feeling blue? Oh, what an I know? Now, damn, get your head out of your hands. He's to all the times we're gonna have. Cooped up for you with the two best like, babes I've seen all year. Give me another bottle of beer. Cause I'm feeling fine. Go ahead and waste your head. We've got the time Hope you don't object if I speak my mind Yeah, sit back and light up a fat one, man It's gonna be a long cold trip if you act like that Think of all the chicks and the money and the news crews Waiting back home for us Get me off the magic bus I don't think I belong Go ahead and waste your life on silly fears Hope you don't object if I crack another beat Yeah! Hold on, who is it here that I see? Wasn't she a favorite girl in the academy? I don't know if I want to lead on this one You know I've done that before She's actually a good girl Or at least a cheap hoe God damn, you have Japanese girls You do it to me every time Oh, the redhead said you shred the jello And I'm jello, baby But you won't talk, won't look, won't think of me I'm the epitome Public enemy, why you wanna go and do me like that? Come down on the street and dance with me. I'm la like you, so please, hello. I'm here, I'm waiting. I think I'd be good for you, and you'd be good for me. I asked you to go to the Green Day concert You said you'd never heard of them How cool is that? So I went to your room and read your diary Watching grunts like drop new track through a press table And then my heart stopped listening to Cho Cho San Falling in love all over again I'm a like you so please, hello, I'm here, I'm waiting, oh, I think I'd be good for you, and you'd 
be good for me Oh, how stupid is it? I can't talk about it I got to sing about it And make a record of it How stupid is it? Won't you give me a minute? Just come up to me And say hello How stupid is it? For all to know you want me to And maybe you just don't know what to do Or maybe you're scared to say I'm falling for you I wish I could get my head out of the sand Cause I'd think we'd make a good team And you would keep my fingernails clean But that's just a stupid dream that I won't realize Cause I can't even look in your eyes without shaking And I ain't faking I'll bring home the turkey if you bring home the bacon I'm the like you So please, hello, I'm here I'm waiting, oh, I think I'd be good for you and you'd be good for me. Yeah. Holy cow, I think I've got one here. Now just what am I supposed to do? I've got a number of irrational fears that I'd like to show you. First there's rules about all goats like me Hanging around with chicks like you And I do like you and another one You say like too much But I'm shaking at your touch I like you way too much My baby I'm afraid I'm falling for you I do about anything to get the hell out of life Or maybe I would rather settle down with you Holy moly baby wouldn't you know it Just as I was busting loose I gotta go turn in my rock star card And get fat and love as due now I'm a burning candle, you're a gentle moth Teaching me to lick a little bit, kinda And I do like you, you're the lucky one No, I'm the lucky one I'm shaking at your touch, I like you way too much My baby, I'm afraid I'm falling for you I do about anything to get the hell out of life Or maybe I would rather settle down with you who oh, Holy sweet goddamn you left your cello in the basement I admire the glowing stars And try to play your tune I can't believe how bad I suck, it's true What could you possibly see in Little old record me And I do like you and you like me too I'm ready, let's do it, baby I'm shaking at your touch I like you way too much My baby, I'm afraid I'm falling for you I do about anything To get the hell out of life or well, maybe I would rather settle down with you. Whoa. It's a song a lot of Weezer fans don't even know, but we thought maybe some of you hardcore kids would <laughs> appropriate for setting off.
folks If you act like All the chicks and the money and the news crews Waiting back home for us Oh, is it cheap, oh?